scriptures from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong in the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you, nor against the head to the feet, I have no need for you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. Back when I was in middle school youth group, this was one of my favorite scriptures because it meant we would get to play Twister. Yes, our youth group leaders would always bring out Twister and make us play it in a way that everyone won. The game was to see how long could we all stay on the mat, stretched and upright together. Now this game, if you don't know it, as an illustration of how to work together as the body of Christ, would always end in laughter. Even the project, was ch when it was challenging and somebody would step on somebody's foot, which happens a lot in Twister, we just apologize and move on, usually with a grimace from the person who got stepped on, but the rest of us laughing outrageously. Now, it occurs to me that you maybe haven't all played the game, and I was going to bring a big mat to show it to you, but then I realized I don't own the game anymore because I'm so old, I don't think I'd find it with that much fun anymore. But it's a game where you spin this dial, and there's a big mat with colored dots on it. And the dial will tell you left foot blue dot. So then you have to put your left foot on the blue dot, which is really simple until you have to put your red foot on the yellow dot at the opposite end of the mat. And then your right hand on the green dot in the middle. And then somebody else has their hand there. It, it turns into a pretty silly scene pretty quickly with a half a dozen youth on the mat trying to make it work. You end up with your partners under you, over you, around you. And in that youth group game, the only way to win was to know where your hands and feet were, stretch and keep your balance, and successfully work together to help others know where their hands and feet were so they could keep their balance. Because our youth leaders were there with a stopwatch. Well, that was only 30 seconds. Let's try it again. Can you make it to 90? You see, if, if we started knocking each other down, no one was going to win the game. We had to find out how could we all stay in this together for the longest time possible. And so when we couldn't figure out how to get a left foot across the mat to the yellow dot, we'd coach each other through it. Try this, or I, I've got a hand free, I'll hold you. If we all came tumbling down, which happened a lot, we'd brush each other off with a lot of laughter and try again. Looking back, I think maybe the youth leaders had the most fun. Thank heavens they didn't have video cameras in those days. It seemed somehow doable in youth group on a fun Sunday evening to build up the body of Christ. 
But over the years, I've discovered that the reality of living that isn't always full of laughter and frolicking. But in those youth group days, the common goal of succeeding at the project was so crystal clear to us. It was us against that stopwatch that we gladly accepted and incorporated each and every gift, each and every strength or weakness along the way so that we could work together to make our Twister teamwork game succeed. Likewise, when we who are in the church are crystal clear about who we are, what we're called to do, and what our gifts and strengths and weaknesses are, we too can create a strong and healthy team, a body of Christ that is working together, whole and healthy, toward a common purpose, to grow in love of God and neighbor. It's that same key to our success that it was to youth group, to work together, in our case, to make this the strongest, most faithful church, the strongest, most faithful body of Christ possible, and to accept and incorporate each other's gifts and strengths along with our weaknesses and our failures. Not that it's always that easy to accept and include every part of the body, but that's what it takes to become a healthy body of Christ. Just like with our human bodies, some parts require special care, just like some people. Not every part works as well as it should. Some parts frustrate us or let us down. My big toe was the culprit this week. As it often seems to be, I, I don't know if I, it's just bigger than it ought to be or it sticks out further or I'm just clumsy. But at least once a month, I run into the corner of my couch, and my big toe is the part that runs into the corner of my couch. Last week, I was doing some chores, running around, and bam, there's my big toe, and it hurts. Why is my big toe not more careful? Why? Why are you not more careful? My big toe seems to me to be a weak link to my body. Why does she get in my way? Why can't she be less sensitive when I bump her? Couldn't we just move on? But she's a part of my body, this big toe on my right foot. And even when I'm frustrated with her, I'm pretty darn lucky to have a big toe because that big toe helps me keep my balance. It'd be harder to stand here and preach without my big toe. That big toe helps me walk straight and true when I go visit a friend in the hospital. That big toe helps me operate my car so I can drive to church and be of service. So thank heavens my big toe is a part of my body, even if it does hurt when I stub it. The church is no different. We have people who hurt. We have people we bump up against. We have people who annoy us, kind of like a stubbed toe annoys us. But the people who annoy us are still connected to us in this body of Christ. Still a part of what God created this church to be. There's a legend about a Hindu man who complained to his guru about someone in his local temple that he couldn't stand working with. The person was always getting on his last nerve. And he said to his guru, oh, why can this person not just vanish from my life. And the guru replied, yes, even if you could remove that person from your life, another person just like him would immediately reappear. Perhaps the people who bug us the most have lessons to teach us. Perhaps we have lessons to learn even from those parts of our body that give us discomfort or cause us frustration. Perhaps my toe is trying to teach me to slow down and to pay attention to where I'm going. Perhaps when we're bumping up against someone, we can learn something about being more coordinated, communicating more clearly, or, or being strong enough to handle the bumps along the way. Perhaps when we run into somebody who is not valuing our gifts or treating us with respect, 
we can learn to stand up for ourselves and recognize our own worth and value are determined by God, not by others. Perhaps when someone in the body isn't as strong or as faithful as we need them to be, we are the ones to help them grow stronger and more faithful. This year, more than 100 of you covenanted to be part of this body of Christ that we call Community Church Congregational. Guess what? That means you've joined my huge youth group game of Twister. Yes, can we get through the year ahead on the same mat, helping each other stand strong, stretching each other where we need to stretch, growing and changing as God calls us to grow and strength and change so that we are building up into the strongest church possible, into the strongest body of Christ, growing in love of God and neighbor. We're either going to be moving and stretching and growing together, or we're going to be falling together. And it's not that much fun to fall together, which is why Paul advises us to work together. He was watching the Corinthian church falling together. They, they were starting to push each other off the mat. They started to lift up some parts of the body and claim that those people were different and somehow more important. Some were judged as less worthy because they didn't have the highest gifts. Others were exalted for their special talents or their abundant wealth. Others were left out for being poor. Some were determined more righteous because they had followed a certain leader. All of this judging and excluding and even exalting was making Paul so frustrated. People who were helpers and caregivers didn't even feel valued. People who had more money got invited to the communion table, and people who didn't got left out. Some who'd been baptized by Paul thought they were better than those who had been baptized by Apollos. Paul was sick of their dissensions. He yearned for the Corinthian church to be strong and unified, to become one body of Christ as it was meant to be. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, it didn't matter if Apollos had dunked them in the water or Paul had dunked them in the water, for the true baptism is the baptism of the Spirit's blessing that falls upon all of us, regardless of who baptizes us. That same Spirit calls us to work together, to be a blessing for others. The Spirit invites us to be the body of Christ, to help each other up when we fall, to help each other stand strong and stretch where God needs us to stretch, just like playing Twister so the whole team wins. It requires participation if we're willing to work together to make this church strong and faithful as God wants us to be. It takes being all in to really grow in love of God and neighbor in a world that doesn't hold the same value of love that we hold. This is not a game where we can afford to push each other down or push each other out or trip each other up or judge someone to be more valuable or less valuable, that person on the yellow dot I like better than the person on the blue dot, or neglect somebody who has tiny hands or reject somebody who has too big a feet. Every person matters. Every person meant to build up and strengthen this body of Christ. Every gift matters. Every gift is needed to build up and strengthen this body of Christ. Everyone here deserves to be valued and respected, honored, treated with compassion and grace for the sake of of the whole body of Christ, not for any one person's personal choice, not for any one person's preferences, but for the whole body of Christ. 
You see, the people who help out behind the scenes are just as precious and vital as the preacher who brings the message or the moderator who leads church council. I'm thinking, church is going to be nice, but you're going to be really glad that Susan set up fellowship in Mertz Hall so you can be dry in your fellowship time afterward. Both of equal importance in making Sunday morning precious for all of us gathered together. The people who care for the sick, just as precious and vital as the people who pay the bills. The people who teach the children, just as important as the people who teach the adults. The people who have a vision for where God is calling this church to go and who we are called to be, just as important as the people who will work to make that vision a reality. Every person needed. Every person valuable. Every person called to work together in whatever role we have been given to build this body of Christ into the strongest church possible. Paul invites us to see the church as a whole rather than as separate from one another. I'm just really tempted to make you all join in a circle so I can teach you the human knot game. But I will resist temptation because it's raining outside. <laughs> but God needs us, each and every one of us, to bring our unique gifts, to strengthen and build up this church. And the beauty is this church is here to help us discover those gifts, to grow in those gifts, to strengthen our gifts so that we can live into our purpose for the glory of God. So whether you're a big hand on the blue dot or a little foot on the yellow dot, know that your place and your gifts matter. Together, we can build and strengthen this church to serve God, to love God and love our neighbors as we love ourselves. A little more faithfully, a little more strongly, each and every day. So as we prepare for communion, let's turn first to the Spirit to talk with God and listen, to discover where you fit in to this body of Christ. What gifts are uniquely yours? And how are you connected and strengthened and called to strengthen others in this body of Christ? Let us pray silently together.